as the state, as a society, as parents and families to protect those amongst us who are most vulnerable, and these are our children. Following the special meeting of cabinet, we have decided to make the following interventions. Yeah, special meeting of cabinet, that took about how long? Six weeks? 42 kids dead? Yeah, hopefully we're gonna hear some brainy legislation. Let's listen, guys. The first intervention is to get hazardous pesticides off our streets and our shelves. The second critical intervention is to protect children from exposure to these substances. The third critical intervention is to prevent future outbreaks. The so if you take, take off the hazardous chemicals from the, from the street, you actually are protecting the kids. But because you're enforcing the law in the first place. So what he was telling us is that all this time, your government has not been enforcing the South African law. That's what you're admitting here. So you're protecting the community by ensuring certain chemicals, de 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 you know, certain dangerous uh, poison aren't easily available for used and actually are penalized by law that people don't get a, just don't actually use this pe pesticides because the people that are using it are our friends, are your people, the people you brought into the country. That's why these people that you brought into South Africa, they're the one that uses these chemicals that were been for many years. These people that you have given them of the right to actually go into these low-income community that are vulnerable, that their parcel shop is the lifeline. They depend on it. You bring up these thugs into those community to do this. So anyway, let's listen. Anyway. The following measures will be implemented with immediate effect. To get hazardous pesticides off the street, we now have directed that there's puzzle shops which have been implicated in the deaths of children must be closed with immediate effect. All spaza shops so how is that going to sort this? How is that getting rid of this puzzle shop implicated with this, the death of these kids going to sort this problem of taking off these hazardous chemicals? I mean, anyway, let's listen, guys. I'm getting annoyed now. God, 10 minutes. Other food handling facilities must be registered within municipalities in which they operate within 21 days from today. Any shop that is not... By the way, this registration that he's talking about, even in 2022, they were actually talking about this again. Uh, that was in 2022. See, that's what they said back then. When I make sure those puzzle shops are owned and operated by South Africans. In 2022, they knew this was a problem, and the sense they talked about it. This is the video of 2022. So, yeah, ANC is crap. And the assurance of the quality of products is there. We are going to support the spaza shops in terms of bulk buying. We'll indicate the mechanisms we are putting in place to support the spaza shops. We are currently working with. The same thing, what she's talking about is the same thing that the president is talking about. Ah, uh, these people who have been caught red-handed of lying to the public about this. They're the problem. That's the reason why you've got 42 kids dead. It's them. They actually must take responsibility of this. 
uh, our municipalities to make sure that all those transfer shops that are licensed and those that are not licensed are brought to the fold and will indicate how we went forward with them. We'll announce the further details. People, die him son speak. Oh, how did we get here? That's what I'm asking. How did we get here? This is incompetency. This is shocking. This is reckless. This is 2022. This, this, the same government was talking about it, but now ANC is part of this GNU thing because they got 40%. I actually think that it was a big mistake that we gave them 40%. They should actually be in the opposition bench. They've actually lost anyway. It's just clinging to power. This this is the example. This tough incident of these deaf kids is an example how ANC is so incompetent. It is it's taken the president about six weeks before the president can come out and speak to the nation. Um, five kids died within half an hour, and then there's about many more kids are dying. It's now about forty two now in total that have died in in about a month including the 22 kids that have died last week as a result of this poisoning of kids. This is not a, a food poisoning as is bacteria. This is contaminated food with a poison, organophosphate, table force, and all the carb, which is it's a carbamate. It's not organophosphate. Very dangerous poisons. One of them is banned. All the, all the carb is banned uh, in South Africa, but it is found in the street because it comes through the port. It is ordered by the Abel friend, the people they brought into the country, the people they brought into the community of this very vulnerable community in South Africa that don't have any other choice. So they say these things, they don't do it. And then there's a crisis. They say they're going to do it. They don't do it. This is how everything has gone in uh, the way the state of South Africa's infrastructure and everything else has collapsed as a result of this. What you're listening to here is something that the minister in his department has said it many years ago in 2022 about registration with Spazza Shop. Why would you have Spazza Shop trading in South Africa without any registration? They should be registered according to the Foodstuff of 1972, Foodstuff Act of 1972. They should be registered. So you're telling us that you haven't been enforcing the law, so you have allowed criminals to run rampant in these low-income community that you brought them into those community so yeah so that's what he's admitting he's admitting deli that deliberation of poisoning children actually let's listen in anyway not registered within 21 days and does not meet all health standards and requirements will be closed South African Police Service and other law enforcement agencies will be required to investigate, to arrest, and to prosecute offenders. This will involve close cooperation. They are already doing it because these chemicals are illegal. The table force, though it's registered, is not. It's illegal for a citizen to have them without a registration. So. Um, already, if they found them, they get arrested, including those who were found a couple of weeks ago to have overcap. So that is something that's already happening. So what are you talking about? With all registered manufacturers, retailers, and suppliers, integrated multidisciplinary inspection teams will undertake compliance inspections of 
food handling facilities, manufacturers, distributors, wholesale and retailers. This will include spaza shops as well as general dealers. Non-compliant businesses and shops linked to any poisoning incidents or found to unlawfully stock hazardous chemicals will be shut down and the law will take its course. A massive campaign of door-to-door -door inspection of all spaza shops, tuck shops and other informal traders will be undertaken, starting with Gauteng and KwaZulu Natal. This will be undertaken by interdisciplinary inspections teams consisting of the South African. By the way, anything that is telling us now, it's not, it's something that is in the Foodstuff Law Act of 1972. So it's just regurgitating the law that he, they, his department, his government should have in, enforced it. If they had enforced this law, these kids wouldn't have died. So he's just repeating something they, they should have done it in before all of this. So... So he's telling us something as if it's a new thing, that they brought up something new, Brenny. I told you that the Foodstuff Act of 1972 stipulated all of this stuff that he's talking about in the last videos. If you go to the videos that I've, um, I have a couple of videos around this poisoning of South African children, and I did mention that law in there and how it works. It is works exactly what he's talking about here so he's presenting this to the nation as if it's something new something new oh agency oh my god why did we why do we deserve these people what have we done <sighs> african military health services which did very well during COVID environmental health practitioners, the South African Police Service, the National Council of Consumers, labor inspectors, and others. The initial phase of inspections will need to be completed within a month. All registered manufacturers of Terboforce will be inspected, that is their premises, to ensure that no products are diverted into non-agricultural markets. The supply chain process for distribution and sale of Terboforce will be investigated to ensure that controls are being adhered to and that there is accountability for who they sell to in the agricultural sector. Regulations and protocols on the traceability repackaging and distribution and sale of pesticides, insecticides and foodstuffs will be strengthened. The second intervention will be strengthened. You know what, that means that we're going to start working. I don't know what, how you're going to strengthen it. How are you going to strengthen in the law that's already there? That actually already says that you cannot have these chemicals being handled by an untrained personnel, that its distribution is really much organized. Or whether you have farmers in the, who are actually involved in this, the only way you can have table force being lying around is because either the farmers themselves are involved in this uh, criminality of allowing certain group of people to get the hold of this table force. I mean, yeah, there is probably, there is, I would suspect that maybe, but then if we could say also if it's stolen, if it's stolen, why aren't they reporting it to the police? that the chemicals and then they have also how they store these chemicals as well, the storage of these dangerous chemicals. So how are they going to strengthen these? Big question mark. And what 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 is the problem with the law, current law? Because we know this law exists. What is the problem with it? There's no problem. He hasn't mentioned that problem with the law. 
to just regurgitating the fact that they have failed to provide an oversight and to enforce this law. It's about the protection of children from exposure to harmful substances. The Department of Basic Education will immediately issue a secular to provincial education departments in all schools on best practice protocols for preventing and managing foodborne illnesses within schools. By the start of the new school year, the Department of Basic Education and school governing bodies, together with the Department of Health, will review and update the. This is not a foodborne illnesses. This is a poisonous food. The term foodborne illnesses must not be used here. It's misleading, it's misinformation, it's poisonous food, okay? Contaminated food with a banned substance. The guidelines for schools on the management of suppliers of foodstuffs to all schools. This will include tax shops operated at these schools and indeed everyone who sells food just outside the school premises. A public education campaign will be launched <clears throat> aimed at children, parents, caregivers, and the broader community on the food safety issues and the identification, the handling, and storage of dangerous chemicals. This campaign will also include the government communication information service. It will include government departments and agencies. We will also get industry organizations and civil society formations to also participate in this. And this will be complemented by a public education campaign aimed at communities, owners of shops, informal traders and other retailers on health, safety and hygiene regulations and the identification of hazardous products and regulations that apply to hazardous products and the legal consequences if these are not adhered to. Ministers of Basic Education and Health and other government departments will classify certain pesticides and insecticides not suitable for home use or dangerous objects that may not be brought or used on school premises. This will be undertaken in terms of the regulations and safety measures for public schools. The third intervention will be aimed at preventing future outbreaks. <clears throat> I have directed that the joint operational and intelligence structures be established at national and provincial level to deal with this crisis. In dealing with this crisis, our local municipalities will be required to take urgent action to address the problem of rat infestations by cleaning cities and towns and removing waste. All municipal landfills sites will be required to comply with the National Environmental Management Waste Act and failure to comply will result in strict sanctions that include directives, compliance notices, and yes, enforcement measures. Municipalities that you have don't work. The Ministerial Health Advisory Committee is being set up to develop medium and long-term prevention measures. This committee will consist of experts such as toxicologists, pediatricians, chemical pathologists, epidemiologists, forensic pathologists, and others. All deaths of patients who are 12 years and below will now be made notifiable in terms of the Notifiable Medical Condition Surveillance System. An electronic medical certification of death will be established 
to allow the National Department of Health to access cause of death information immediately after a death is certified. The work of the Biosecurity Hub will be strengthened to better control the entry of products, organisms, and harmful biological products at ports of entry. The Department of... Yeah, because the reason why you have these banned substances in South Africa is because these illegal migrants are bringing them in. They're bringing them in, into South Africa. Okay, that's why you're having them. So I haven't heard anything here that suggests to registration, how this registration would even work. What is the criteria for, registr for registering these people to run this puzzle shop? What's the minimum standard these people must meet? be able to actually run these shops. Anyway, let's listen. Agriculture is in the process of reviewing and updating all relevant legislation with respect to the regulation and authorization of agricultural pesticides for use in our country. A joint fund of 500 million rand will be established by the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition and Small Business Development to support township and rural businesses, including community convenience stores. The funding will be for the refurbishment of businesses and non-financial support in terms of technical skills, regulatory compliance and capacity building. As we undertake these interventions and measures, there is a lot that we can do as parents to protect our children. As consumers and parents, if we buy food or send our children to buy food, it must only be from places that are licensed to sell foodstuffs and that observe food safety regulations. How would a person in those community know that these places are licensed? Are they going to be, uh, is, going, is it legal for them, it, would it be illegal for them not to have a reg registration certificate? Mm? Because how would you know as a consumer that the place that you're going to buy these things is actually registered? Is it is it a law now that actually they must display a registration? We know a lot of them do a lot of scamming uh, of, uh, you know, printing certificates that are fake and having fake identifications and all of that. So how would a consumer verify this? If they go to the shops, they look at the certificate, where would they then ring what number the department number they need to ring to confirm that this shop is registered because they cannot rely on what displays in the shops in people need to verify so they need to see the certificate and then they can then ring a number to the department to actually verify that this person that's selling these product is registered because we know this certificate can end up being fake certificate anyway because you got a lot of criminals in south africa so this certificate can uh, that you're talking about but can be as fake as this passport and identification numbers so we just yeah anyway let's listen we must make it a habit to check that food is prepared in a clean and hygienic area. We must make sure that foodstuffs being sold have a clear branding and labels. The names of the manufacturers must be clearly depicted. This man, a few days ago, there was a report that these illegal migrants in South Africa who are running this puzzle shop had actually 
I relabeled some of expired canned food that I got from Woolies. Yeah. So they were relabeling that. They have like a relabeler that they would relabel this stuff. So you, you can see even from that point, if somebody has relabeler, if they're not manufacturer, why? Where's the law? So the law must be strong enough to say, if you got a relabeler, you're not a manufacturer, that's illegal. We're going to arrest you. If you have a, like a medicine something that you use to make medicines in order a GMP might good you but not being accredited as a with a GMP standard good manufacturing practices uh, to manufacture products they therefore you'd be breaking the law so what he's talking about here is talking about something that is um doesn't make sense at all it doesn't make sense so yes, the labeling is a good thing because the labeling is actually there in the Foodstuff anyway. Foodstuff Act of 1972 has labeling. This is not something new anyway. That's what I'm saying. It's just telling us something that already we know, but in South African law, it's implemented. But these in this community, this government has actually given a has neglected this community. Has neglected this community. In fact, has worsened the the uh, the lifestyle. You know, the condition in this community has been worsened by the influx of these illegal migrants in those community, and those illegal migrants are in unskilled asylum and refugees that are doing all of this stuff in there. So you've worsened it. You haven't brought up people who are skilled, migrants who are skilled in that community to provide essential work to help them. You brought in thugs and criminals in there. So that's what, you know. So you cannot expect something good come out from that because the immigration system in South Africa is the worst in the world, worst in the world and that they do not have expiry dates that have, that have long passed. We must educate our children about food safety and teach them to check for this labeling themselves. Anyone who sees fake foodstuffs and expired foodstuffs being sold in our communities should report them to the National Consumer Commission. The number for the National Consumer Commission is 012-065-1940. 012-065-1940. We have to take greater care with the storage and the utilization of pesticides and dangerous chemicals. Now this That's number is just reporting, but it's not about verifying the registration. So where's the one for verification of if those shops are actually registered? Not doing so has dire consequences. We must only buy pesticides that are in their original containers and that are clearly labeled for household use. All dangerous chemicals must be kept out of reach of children. Spaza shops and street vendors have a special responsibility for the health and safety of their customers. They need to operate responsibly and in terms of our laws. Operating responsible. They are people of certain character. I don't think those people have character that actually will actually motivate them to do the right thing anyway. It's just my opinion. They need to observe certain basic practices about food safety. For example, they must not use the same containers or implements for chemical substances and food. Only pesticides and chemicals registered for household use may be sold. 
They must be clearly labeled and in their original packaging. Establishments found to be in possession of pesticides that are restricted or banned will face legal consequences. So what are you telling us, that in the past they weren't facing anything? So that's why you have these deaths, so you weren't enforcing the law? Because these chemicals are banned. Even table force, if you find table force in the shop, for in the shops, it's actually illegal because the person must have must be an agriculturist and be registered to do so. And it's it's actually from where it's been uh, registered up into the um to the farmer, it's actually very uh, strictly controlled. So the minute you see it, it's actually legal. So you mean that people were just looking at that and not actually enforcing the law? and ignoring all of that. I mean, some of you South Africans, you, you really, I don't understand why you you go on on this lawlessness and allowing this lawlessness. This lawlessness must end. It must end. Once again, South Africans are called to work together to overcome this great difficulty that has befallen us. We are far from being helpless, and there is much that we can do when we work together. Each one of us needs to be better informed about the risk of pesticides and other dangerous products. And we need to be informed about the safety of the food that we consume. Each of us needs to take responsibility for the safety and well-being of those around us, particularly the children of our nation. And I do believe that by working together, by enforcing the law, by being alert and responsible, we'll be able to bring an end to these tragedies. Once again, we extend our condolences to the families of the children who have passed away and hope that the Almighty God will give them strength to go through this very difficult period that they are going through. Morena Bulukasi Chavasa Hesu, Mudzimu Wapatu Chedze, Africa Chipembe, Morena Obuluke, Si Chavasa Hesu, Ngosi Sigeleli Africa, Hot Sien said Africa and God bless South Africa and all of us. I thank you. All right, and that concludes the President's